There's one thing for sure though, whether this is a good decision or a bad decision, the ACC just changed the entire landscape of college football. It's so crazy for me at least to look at this map and say, yep, all these teams are in one conference. What in the actual crap just happened? I gotta be 100% transparent with all of you. This was the last thing I expected to hear today. It's a little mind boggling to say the least. I can't even believe it got past number one, but also the timing of this. You couldn't have waited to do this in the middle of the week. Next week, you're doing it right before the biggest day of college football, week one? Everybody knows this, the biggest week of college football. It's not rival week, it's not championship weekend, it's week one. Because this is when every single team has something to play for and every single fan base has hope. And then out of nowhere, we get hit with this news today. We ain't doing no intro, none of that. We ain't got time for that. If you like the content, consider joining our amazing college football community. We're on the road to 300,000 subscribers, and we can't get there without your help. So consider joining if you do like content like this, but let's just get straight into it. So we all know this, and I've been talking about this for a while now. The ACC, they have been looking to expand. This isn't anything new because we all know this as well. Florida State, the Senate Rose, Clemson, and a couple other teams, they've made it clear that they want to leave. Now, if you're not caught up to date, you'd be sitting there saying, well, Matt, why do they want to leave? And if they do want to leave so bad, why haven't they already? That's a great question, my friend, and I have an even better answer. G-O-R. You know what that stands for? Grant of rights. To make a long story short, the ACC, all these teams, including Florida State and Clemson, they are locked in an incredible hard deal to escape. If Florida State and Clemson want to leave the ACC, they will be paying $30 million per year for the next 10 years. So yeah, it's expensive. And even with that being expensive, they think they'll leave within the next couple of years. So what does that mean? And I got to give the ACC some props and credit here. They understand if they just sit back and watch this team leave, they're going to be in the similar position in the same position that the Pac-12 is currently in. So props to the ACC. Clap it up, clap it up. I'm going to give them a lot of credit and a lot of respect because they're at least acting on this. They know they just can't sit back and be on cruise control. They got to act now and get some teams. That way, at least, worst case and scenario, Clemson, Florida State, and a couple of our teams leave, you still got some more. Whereas the Pac-12, they had their teams leave and they didn't have any. You see what I'm saying? What's a good analogy for this? It's almost like in winter when you're going out somewhere it's always better to bring more jackets and more clothes because you can always take them off whereas if it's cold and you only brought one jacket and you're sitting out there and you're like man i wish i would have brought two jackets well you can't make another one appear you see what i'm saying it is better to have more than to have less because if you have more, you can just not use the extra stuff. I think you get my point, and I believe at least from everything I've heard, that is the mentality the ACC has. And there's been rumor and speculation about the ACC adding California and Stanford, and it's been made official today. They added not just California and Stanford, they also added SMU. And it's not just quite as simple as they're adding these three teams. Check this out, I found this really fascinating. SMU won't receive a dime the first nine years they're in the conference. What about that? Now, you may also be sitting there saying, well, Matt, why would SMU agree to that deal? Because my friend, my friend, they're playing chess, not checkers. It's kind of like hanging out with multimillionaires and billionaires. A lot of times people will work for millionaires for free just to network. A good analogy for this is working at a country club. Most people that are members at a country club, they got some money, right? So if you work at a country club, no, you're not gonna make a lot of money, but networking, that's the best place to network in the entire world or at least one of the best. You may not make a lot of money up front, but just by talking to these millionaires, getting in with them, being friends with them, it's gonna help you out in the long run, and that's a similar situation with SMU. They're like, hey man, we just wanna be a part of the conference because we know in eight to 10 years, we're gonna get all that money back. So that's the whole thing with SMU. Now let me show you this map and <laughs> Wow, take a look at this. So on the right, you got your normal ACC teams, but look how much the ACC has expanded. This is unreal because the ACC has now changed the entire landscape of college football. You have two of the farthest teams on the West Coast, and you also have a team as far east as Boston College. There is not a bigger road travel than this, guys. You got a team all the way in California. You got two teams in California and also a team in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Uh, Why would I say it like that? I don't know. It's kind of a hard word. Massachusetts. It's massive. Say it a lot, it's kind of hard to say, but you get the point. And as much as I've sat up here and say, oh, well, man, that's a big travel for Oregon to go all the way to Michigan and Ohio State, 
it's not as much as this. This is just craziness, and it was one of the biggest drawbacks and the reason why they didn't add California and Stanford earlier. What was the drawback? What did everybody say, and why didn't they vote to add them in earlier? Hey man, this travel, this road travel for not only our football team, but our softball team, baseball team is too much. But if you've been keeping up with the channel and watching videos, you know, that wasn't a, what's the word I'm looking for? That wasn't a downside to this for me. You know why it's not a downside? Because being an athlete is a privilege. If you play, for example, for Boston College and you want to travel to California, well, guess what? You can quit. And I hate to be this way, but it's the reality. This is a football decision. I don't understand why people try to bring up the baseball and softball, the tennis, the golf team. No, this is a football decision. You can take that how you want, but it's cold hard facts. I've said this before, and I'm only going to say it one more time. Football is the reason that California, Clemson, any D1 team out here can have a softball team. Football is the reason that these athletic programs can have swimming teams and stuff like that, etc., etc. I don't want you to think I'm downplaying swimming teams and golf teams. Heck, my cousin was on the golf team at Alabama. I'm not downplaying it. I'm just telling you the reality and the rationale behind these decisions. They don't go into these meetings going, oh, well, what about the baseball team when they play a home and away series? How's that going to affect travel? No, no, no. They don't think about that. But anyways, getting a move on here, let me read you off some more stuff. Like I was saying earlier, originally, four teams were not in favor of this. Clemson, Florida State, Santa Rose, North Carolina, and NC State. And how ironic is that because Clemson and Florida State... They're going to be leaving whenever they get the first opportunity. But I digress. Originally, they said no. However, they changed their minds and the deal went through. I just can't get over that how Florida State and Clemson are like, no, 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 no. We're not in favor of this. Mark it down. They're going to leave when they get the first chance. I know it. But anyways, here's the important part about all this, not too many people bring up. I'm going to highlight it for you right here. Stanford and California would take a reduced TV share, which is under 30%. But this is the thing I was talking about earlier. SMU was expected to take zero TV shares for nine years. The schools would see an escalation in their shares through grant of rights, and they'd receive non-TV ACC shares from the NCAA, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to get all too nerdy there and read off all that last part, but you get the point. If you don't understand this, I know it can be kind of confusing. Let me dumb this down. The ACC brought in California Stanford on a reduced contract. They're not giving them the same contract that Clemson and Florida State are currently getting. And with SMU, they're not even going to be paying them for nine years. And yeah, without getting all too nerdy here and scientific, that's all there is to it. That's all you need to know. California and Stanford, they've been brought in on a reduced contract and SMU won't make a dime for nine years. I thought at first it was seven years, so I guess they moved it up to nine, but still crazy. Seven or nine years without making a penny is pretty insane. But like I said, they're playing chess, not checkers. They think in 15, 20 years, they'll get all that money back and then some. This is a power move and a power play from SMU. And I like it because if SMU can get relevant again, and now they have the recruiting pitch of, hey, we're in the ACC, watch out for them. <laughs> Look at this picture somebody posted on Twitter. I, I completely forgot about this. What about Oregon State and Washington State? They're now the only two members in the Pac-12. Oh, man. So now it's not even the Pac-4. It is the Pac-2. And that's also interesting to me. I mean, Washington State has a huge fan base. I'm surprised they didn't get picked up by, like, the B-12 or the ACC. And Oregon State, I mean, heck, you see it. They're a top-20 football team. I understand Oregon State doesn't have this huge fan base like Washington State, but kind of shot they didn't get picked up. That's what we really need to be talking about. What's next for these two teams right here? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. Where does Oregon State and Washington State go about all of this? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Brett Murphy, here's what he posted. He said, that, like I thought, SMU will not receive any media rights revenue for first seven years. Okay, so whatever. Some people are saying nine years. Some people are saying seven. I'm going to go with seven. So you get the point. But SMU is not getting money for seven years. Check on this comment right here. They kind of had to expand for Sega Survival, which I've been, that's what I've been really ranting about. But yikes, that's such a weird tree of a team's coming to the conference. And I agree. I'm going to show you the map yet again right here. And it's different to say the least. Me personally, I haven't even given you guys my thoughts on it. But y'all know how I feel about expansion and conference realignment. I like it. I'm a fan of it. I'm a fan of change. I welcome change in. And also, I love competition. I think Stanford's going to bring some competition to the ACC. And Stanford already sort of feels like an ACC team. I guess it's because they play Notre Dame all the time. California, on the other hand, does not feel like an ACC team. So that one's going to take some time to get used to. And SMU, well, a little strange as well. But I'm not opposed to it. And you also got to think about this. The ACC is just trying to 
they're throwing darts at a board or they're throwing stuff at a sticky board hoping something just sticks eventually. They're really just trying to survive at this point and I'm not going to knock a man for trying. All in all, I think it's a win for the ACC, and I think it's a win for these three teams. I think Stanford and California are just happy to get out of the Pac-12, considering it's nothing anymore in SMU. They're more than thrilled. That's how I feel about that. And as far as it goes for the conferences, this is what it seems like. You got the Big Ten and the SEC. Those are your super and mega conferences. And then you got the Big 12 and ACC. I'd put them in the same category. Nobody's really going to take the Big 12 and ACC serious because they don't have the talent that the SEC and the Big Ten has. But they're still decent conferences just because they got so much volume. The volume in the Big 12 and ACC is incredible. There's one thing for sure, though, whether this is a good decision or a bad decision, the ACC just changed the entire landscape of college football. It's so crazy for me, at least, to look at this map and say, yep, all these teams are in one conference. It's ludicrous, man. It's ludicrous. But at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. I'm curious. Let me know in the comment section. How do you feel about it? I got this weird feeling that it's going to be split down the middle. I think half of you are going to like this, and I think the other half aren't. Actually, let me change that. I think 60% of people don't like this, and maybe 40 do. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I'm going to reiterate this. Some people are going to say, well, Matt, what about the travel costs, and what about the traveling toll this is going to put on the student athletes like i said don't like it don't play and most athletes will tell you this some of the best times you ever have in your life is going on road trips with your team i know we're gonna have some student athletes watching this video tuning in and let me know would you be excited to travel more or do you think it's gonna be harder to do all your schoolwork and whatnot i'll leave it at that let me know your thoughts down below but uh,